name is Steve Benjamin um, and during lockdown I've been focusing on photographing the sunbirds that occur naturally around my garden. And here are a couple examples of what I've managed to shoot. Hope you enjoy. So during this video, I really want to explain to you how I've managed to create these images. Um, and this can come in many steps. So the equipment I've used, the locations, the perches, the lighting, um, how to treat the birds, what's in the feeder. I'm just gonna give you a very rough, hands-on look in my house and what I've done. Um, and that starts with a little bit of a backstory. So my main photography is underwater photography. Um, and whales, sharks, dolphins, coral reefs, and kelp forests are really my passion. Um, I have a tourism business called Animal Ocean. We focus on photographic trips and um, seal tours out to Hout Bay, Dekka Island, to go focus on seal snorkeling, just for anyone in general. So the kind of equipment that I had around my house when lockdown happened was mostly underwater photographic equipment. So in underwater photography, we like to use underwater housings. This has a Sony A7S inside of it. And we swim around with uh, strobes on either side. And this just gives us the ability to control lighting. So when I went into lockdown, this is the kind of stuff I had. I also had a, a Canon 70 to 200 mm lens um, for topside photography. And I was really thinking of ways to adapt what I had in the house, as well as I also had video lights. These also are important, and uh, when I film video underwater, I put these in place of the strobes. These were very useful. So let me show you where I live and how I've adapted my underwater camera to be a sunbird mini studio. Okay, so I'm gonna take you onto my roof so I can show you the environment around me and you can see where I live. So I live in Cork Bay. It's a small coastal town in Cape Town. It's a very beautiful morning this morning. The ocean is completely flat. I can hear all the birds around me. But most importantly for sunbird photography is we have a huge Feinborth mountain range that's pretty undisturbed and really got a lot of flowering plants that attract them naturally. And in my garden we have a lot of cover and natural hiding places and nesting areas, um, both for very common birds like Cape Sparrows and Laughing Doves and other species. But the whole birding community is quite strong here, so it's a very busy place. So I just wanted to say a few things about the birds that we actually find in the garden. Um, so the common ones we have here are the Cape Sparrows and the Cape Bulbuls, and they really make up the bird community in the area. The sunbirds that we have are the orange-breasted sunbird, which is endemic to the Western Cape and to the Feinbos area. It looks like it has a sunrise on its chest. It's unbelievably beautiful. Uh, it's by far my favorite of the, of the bunch. Then we get a lot of southern double-collared sunbirds. They hold territories and they're quite vicious on the bird feeder. They do push other species away in this area um, and they're very, very vocal. So we hear them a hell of a lot and they are very active on the feeder. Um, and then we have a few Cape sugar birds that come through, but they are very sporadic, normally in the afternoon. They're much larger. They push other species away, and they're also super endemic, which means they're only found in South Africa, only in the Western Cape and in the Fenbos area. And both the Cape sugarbird and the orange breasted sunbird are big ticks for birders that have come to the area. So beautiful, beautiful species. Um, then the unicorn, if you want to call it that, would be the Malachite sunbird. Um, I had a few females and some immature individuals arrive, very few that are fully plumaged adult males and those are by far the most spectacular. They are just so vibrant, almost, you know, besides just being the malachite color, they also have these blues and emeralds and other variations. So whenever one of those birds lands, it's a complete surprise and it's amazing. So I had one instance on a red hot poker where a malachite landed and it's by far my favorite image. It looks like this. Um, so those are some of the birds we have. So you might be asking what's in the bird feeder and the bird feeder is simply just sugar water. Um, don't put so much sugar that it clogs up, um, maybe two or three tablespoons. You can buy these anywhere in the shops, well, when the shops open. 
um, and just leave it there. You can put a net covering over the mouth to stop any bees getting caught in it. So check that out. Um, don't use brown sugar. Brown sugar has impurities in it. Not good for birds. Don't use any red food coloring. Also bad for birds. Just use plain white sugar. The red is important because birds naturally are attracted to red flowers. Um, you know, there's a symmetry and evolution between the bull shape and the flower shape. And red is a color that attracts birds. So red is important. You can use tape. You could paint it. Um, these ones just come red. So that's the bird feeder. Super simple. Get your hands on one. This is Marlon and Lady. Hope you don't mind meeting them. So out on my little patio over here, we have a great little area to hang a bird feeder. And we've always had a bird feeder here. Um, so I wanted to create something different, as in like the birds come so close and have for so many years. I really wanted to use underwater lighting techniques on the sunbirds that are in my garden. And that wasn't easy to do. It took me about a week to sort of figure it out. And that allowed me to think I should take my arms off the housing and clamp them to the roof. And then I can independently set up my lights, my perch and my feeder which would give me control of the, over the whole situation to be able to photograph the birds in a well-lit situation. So that's how I set up um, the feeder. I particularly wanted a backlight and that was super important. Um, the backlight highlights the bills and any sort of outline of the feathers. Birds like southern double-collared sunbirds are really dark-headed, especially the orange-breasted sunbirds. So I wanted something to really make those, make those uh, dark shades pop out. Um, the sun is super bright, obviously, um, so I needed a close side light backed with a, a quite a bright backlight to counteract the sun's natural light to make the image pop out. Um, and let me show you how I've created the black background. So what I've done is I've just put the bird feeder in the sun. Super simple. Super bright light. You can see it's highlighting. It's probably blowing out. And the background is just simply a deep, dark, shadowy bush. And what's interesting here is that this deep, dark, shadowy bush is best until about 11 o'clock. After that, um, some, of the, some of the leaves inside the bush start to light up and I get little patches of light in my image. I have made it useful for me. I've cut back the bush. And as I'm sitting here talking to you, look at this. Incredible bird species. Okay, the other thing that was super important was the perch choice. Because there are only two things in the image. One is the bird and the other is the perch. So you need to choose perches that are interesting. So the Strelitzia was super bright and looks like this. The Protea was super cool and obviously it's iconic and some of the images look like this. Um, but then the double perch was super interesting and I when I picked the perch, I thought, wow, imagine two birds sitting side by side. So I have to give them the opportunity to be able to do that. And I used um, Y-shaped perches specifically in the hopes that birds would naturally come and sit either side. And it worked. Um, the Malachite and orange breasted sunbird side by side for me is an absolute highlight of this project. So very cool. What I'm trying to do now is to create a white background for these birds. And I'm going to do that by taking a pole and make a, make a sort of a T-piece and I'm going to hang a white background that the sun is going to light. Will it hold forever? No. Is it any good as a handyman job? No. Will it do the job? Probably for a while. So this pillow colour is being a nice white backdrop but it's got folds in it. So death to the pillow cover and opening it up to get a clean white background. Sheet is a great idea but it doesn't really work very well. So what we've done now is taken Monique's amazing yoga sign, back to back, put them, and now this is going to be a much better. Thanks, man. Pleasure. Thank you so much. I also tried some slow shutter speed photography and to do this I used a fifth of a second and then a, a burst of light from my strobes and what this does is that um, it captures the motion within the slow shutter speed 
but then the pop of the flashes frees the image, still giving some quality to the overall composition. So a little bit of information about my camera settings I was using. Um, I was using generally quite fast shutter speeds because I really wanted to freeze those birds. Um, so over 1,500th of a second, you know, maybe even 2,000th of a second I was using. Um, and to achieve those um, shutter speeds, I really needed to keep my f-stop way down. So sometimes I was even shooting f2.8 um, or certainly less than f5. Um, so my Canon had a little bit of trouble because the ISO capabilities on my Canon 7D Mark II are not great. I don't like going above ISO 800, which meant that it couldn't always shoot fast enough. Um, luckily I did have an f2.8 lens, so it worked most of the time. Um, I went over to my Sony a7S II, which has got much better ISO capabilities. Um, but because of my Canon onto Sony, I used a Metabones adapter which affects my focus and the autofocus ability. So I was having to manually focus uh, a lot of those shots, which made it trickier to use, but with better results when I got a shot right. So it's been a bit of a compromise between what I have um, and what's available to me and the abilities of the different cameras to deal with um, fast shutter speeds while still achieving a black background. Um, but in short, between both cameras, um, the the dynamic range of cameras are not as great as your human eye. So you can see into the shadows and you can also see a bright um, bird sitting in the sun, but a camera can't. So basically you're exposing for the birds and the black background automatically just drops away and becomes black. So if that seemed confusing, just, just go try it out. Other thing I wanted to tell you is that in post, I would import into Photoshop and I am touching up my images where I need to. The exposure tool to darken some of the light patches in the background. It's obvious that it's a studio setup and this is, I'm doing this to experimentally create images of these birds. With all of that, I still hope the images are incredible. It's certainly been some of the most fun photography that I've done in a long time. Um, and I never thought that this would deliver so much interesting results and, and everyone being so interested in it. I think everyone you know, looks to their bird feeders during lockdown for a source of entertainment. I certainly did. And um, I think it resonates with lots of people seeing images um, like these coming out on social media. Um, so thank you so much for following. Um, I have created some screensaver and desktop packs. They're on my website, stevebenjamin.co.za. Um, I'll leave the link somewhere in the description here. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram, it's at animal underscore ocean. Um, but thank you for following and please comment below, tell me if this was interesting, tell me what you think. Okay, cheers.